Hey, welcome to Tales from the Troll Hole. I'm your host, Cecil B., and together we're going to dive deep into the internet and find what stories there are to be read, enjoyed, laughed at, cried with, you name it. Thanks for coming along on this journey with me. Now grab your torch and pitchfork. Let's dive into this troll hole. Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to Tales from the Troll Hole. I'm Cecil B., and as usual, I'm here to tell some stories to you from the past, because I recorded this a while ago. Okay, so it's holiday time, holiday season. Everyone's getting ready for Indigenous People's Day, Thanksgiving, or just gathering with family to celebrate food in general, thankfulness, what have you. We're traveling, we're hanging out with friends and family, we're doing the thing. But I also understand that these are stressful times for some people. Thanksgiving times are not always joyful times, and sometimes the thing you're thankful for most is when it's over. And when you get to go back home (laughs) or for when the last guest leaves and you close the door and do a big sigh and sink to the floor and try not to think about all the dishes. So what I'm going to read to you today are stories of terrible Thanksgivings. (laughs) Whether you have a long drive to or from or if you're listening while you're cooking and you're concerned about your Thanksgiving, how it might go. At least you know it will probably not be as bad as these ones. And I'm just hoping that that will bring you some joy and comfort, like a big old bowl of mashed potatoes for your ears. Speaking of potatoes, I know that for a while when I was growing up, I was always in charge of making some sort of art. I would draw big giant pictures of people. I would make these little placemats and place cards like I would write people's names and put a cornucopia next to it or draw a a, a pumpkin pie next to it and so I'd be like grandma's gonna sit here and grandpa's gonna sit here and Brumhilda will sit over here (laughs) oh and the kids table too that was always fun once I grew out of making the table art and different decorations and stuff I was in charge of peeling the potatoes which I hate. I hate it so much. Not not to be a negative Nancy over here, but I've never gotten along with the potato peeler as the, as an instrument. It is terrible. I have no idea how to tune the thing. I'm so sorry. I had to do it. As a utensil in the kitchen, I can't get a hold of it. And then when your fingers start to get all pruney and then you accidentally like peel your knuckle and you're like, ah, that's the worst. But you can't stop because you've got to peel 20 million fucking potatoes. God. If you listened to the last episode where I'm talking to Ashley Weller, my older sister, about food and recipes in general, I mentioned how I don't peel the potatoes. And I like to think it's because there's vitamins in the peel. That's what I tell myself, that it's better for me to eat that. But really, it's because I will not peel another fucking potato as long as I live. I have a potato peeler. Why? I'm not peeling jack shit. I don't even peel cucumbers. I just get the English cucumbers because you don't have to peel those fuckers. They come in the non-waxed edible little skinsies. It's really nice. Carrots? Don't peel them. You get the baby carrots. They're peeled already. Did you know there's no such thing as a baby carrot? They're just peeled ass carrots. Fucking wild. I will say one thing that is very satisfying to do, though, is to peel the outer layer of an onion. That is very nice because you can just do it by hands with little fingies. You can just get it done. That's very nice. Until you start crying, then it's not so nice. Let's start getting into these stories, shall we? This Reddit thread is asking for what is the quote-unquote incident at Thanksgiving. All right, this first story comes from Drunk Off My Ash. My grandmother ran over herself with her SUV. (laughs) I was on my way to the festivities when it happened, so I don't know the exact details, but she was getting food out from the back of her SUV, put it in neutral instead of park, and it slowly ran over her. Slowly? The craziest part 
is that my family, all inside, didn't notice until they heard a bump against the house. No. The SUV made three loops before hitting the house. What? She ended up being fine, but now isn't allowed to go outside alone anymore on holidays. This story is now a oh, grandma moment in our family. Jesus. Grandma got run over by a Subi. Getting out some food from the SUV. <laughs> you can say there's no such thing as neutral. But as for me and Grandpa, we believe. <laughs> I mean, thank goodness she was okay, though. That could have been so awful. But I'm so glad that she was fine and that it's just going to be the best. That's the best oh, Grandma moment that, like, could have been bad but is actually great. And I guess that's what makes those stories great is the possibility of danger that wasn't. You know, I guess that's kind of the the thing that makes it special, like a special moment was that it could have been awful and wasn't. You know what I mean? This next story is from G.J. Lynch 22. My grandma accidentally poured dish soap on the turkey instead of oil. Might have been one of the funniest but most upsetting things I've ever seen. How do you even... Are you keeping the oil in an Ajax bottle? No, it's got to be in a palm olive one. Palm olive oil. Oh, I hope I hope she wasn't embarrassed, though. How sad. <laughs> I'm sure it's just like a, a cherished memory now, but still Ooh, makes me nervous for her feelings. The next story is from Sh It's Sneakos. I thought it would be a funny prank to put a rubber chicken in the oven on Thanksgiving. My mom would laugh and laugh. Ho, 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 there's a rubber chicken in the oven. What a gag. 13-year-old me didn't realize that normal adults usually preheat the oven before putting the turkey in. <laughs> That's got to be such a, you open the oven and then get hit with acrid burnt rubber. I mean, it still involves rubber chicken, so that is still funny, technically, because it has to be. That's the law. Rubber chicken will always be funny. Maybe not in the moment, but here we are in the future, and it is funny. Oh my gosh, this next one is from Cecil Weasel. That's so funny. <laughs> okay. My cousin tried showing us, quote unquote, the boot trick. It was a way to get the cork out of a bottle of wine without a corkscrew. You put the bottom of the bottle in your shoe and hit it against the wall and it's just supposed to get the cork out. He gathered us all outside to show us how it works. We're standing in my aunt's driveway to see the trick. Upon hitting the wall, the entire bottle shatters and his shoe is soaked in red wine. <laughs> I guess that's pretty mild. My family gets along pretty well. That's terrific because you've got an audience and then it just all goes to shit. And then you've got a wine-soaked, wet foot shoe. You know, <laughs> I, hope, I hope you had another pair of shoes to change into, actually. Oh, boy. All that wine is going straight to my foot. <laughs> the next tale comes from Space Horse. My grandparents had a new oven, and my grandmother had never made a turkey in it before. The turkey drippings somehow caught fire, and the kitchen filled up with smoke. We called 911, but by the time the fire department had arrived, my dad and my grandfather had put out the fire. So when the firemen arrived, there was no more fire. They were really nice and understanding. My grandmother was mortified. My drunk aunt tried hitting on all of the firemen, even though she had a good 25 to 30 years on them. My cousin and I just stood in the front yard drinking beers in silence, watching it all play out. Fortunately, the turkey was fine and dinner proceeded normally once everything settled down. That's really nice that the, f the fire people were great about it because I'd be worried too about like wasting their time, like being like, oh my gosh, you probably had actual fires to put out. I'm so sorry. Like that's a, I'm getting all sweaty just thinking about it. I don't want to waste the time of important people. Blech. But, and you all got to still have dinner too. So that's amazing. That's great. Up next is a story from Annie Ruins Everything. 
I'm at my friend's conservative Catholic family's house for Thanksgiving, and his older brother told everyone that my pal had gotten a tattoo. His parents were pissed and forced him to show them the tattoo. When they saw that it was a dollar sign on his left butt cheek, there were tears. (laughs) Oh, the next, oh, the comment below it says, missed opportunity, it should have been the pound sign. (laughs) Now, it doesn't say if the tears were laughter or sadness or anger, but I'm going to assume that they were joyful tears because that sounds so funny. (laughs) Up next is a story from Meridian One. I heard some screaming from outside my apartment. I opened the door and saw this lady running to the dumpster with a turkey in the pan still on fire. She threw it into the dumpster, which then caught on fire. I called 911 so the fire department could put it out. Oh, my God. Can you (laughs) just the idea of opening your front door and seeing someone screaming with a flaming turkey running to the dumpster? (laughs) Here's one from Kevin Noy. This Thanksgiving would be special. We invited somewhere around 25 people. Normally, it would have been 12 and everyone arrived. Naturally, my mother brought a seriously large turkey and had it slow cooking all day. It was going to be the highlight of the day and everyone was looking forward to it. Fast forward, the turkey is out of the oven and being carved. It looks and smells delicious. The table is set. Everyone's sitting down at the table, passing around mashed potatoes and talking about whatever. My mom is bringing the turkey from the kitchen to the dining room. She drops the turkey platter. It shatters. Turkey and porcelain shards litter the floor. Thankfully, most of the turkey was salvaged due to the five-second rule. Some of us still had shards of turkey platter on our plates, but it wasn't a big deal. The turkey was as good as it promised to be, and it is sometimes mentioned as the legendary floor bird. Okay, legendary floor bird is fantastic, and... It needs to be the name of a classic rock tribute band. However, imagine if you had gotten a shard of porcelain in your mouth and swallowed it and then had to go to the hospital. That would be a case for Dr. House. Do you think porcelain shows up on x-rays? Hmm. I don't know. We need to get Dr. House on this. Or maybe Dr. Cameron. She'd know what to do. Here's a nice little short one from user Harry and Lana. My uncle broke one of my grandmother's antique chairs during an aggressive game of spoons. (laughs) It was too funny for anyone to be mad. And the comment below it from Guns Beer Murica says, If you don't get aggressive playing spoons, then you're not playing it correctly. Listen, I've never played spoons, unless you're talking about the one where you keep a spoon in your mouth and then you're supposed to tap somebody on the head, but it's a trick because they go to do it to you and then it's all like weak because you're holding a spoon in your mouth. And then when it's your turn to do it to them, you have someone behind you actually whack them on the head with a spoon with their hands, but they think it's you doing it with your mouth and they're impressed by the freakish strength of your grip on the spoon with your mouth. I don't think that's what they're talking about though. I think what I had been playing was a terrible prank and not a game. Our next story comes from L-O-T-R Forever One. First of all, terrific username. I agree. L-O-T-R for everyone. I was probably six or seven at the time. My mom's candles caught the kitchen curtains and some decorative greenery on fire. <laughs> my sister and my cousins and I were at the kids' table in the kitchen while the adults were in the dining room, so no one of significance noticed anything except me. My mom threatened us with pain of death if we annoyed any adults during dinner, so I quietly walked into the dining room and stood silently for a minute or two until someone noticed me, and only then did I politely say, Sorry, but the kitchen's on fire. My mom still gives me grief to this day about prioritizing politeness over sense. Now, in my mind, this is a tiny British child. <laughs> Sorry, but the kitchen's on fire. <laughs> and that is, that's totally something I would have done, too. Absolutely. I was a terrified child, didn't want to 
speak to anyone, especially if they told me not to. So if there was something important, I'd just stand there too. Oh my gosh, that's wild. All right, the next Thanksgiving disaster story comes from Dirt McGirt. (laughs) I was having a farting contest with my cousin in the bathroom. (laughs) She let out one of those ones that ends in an upturned squeak like her asshole was meekly asking me a question. (laughs) I lost it and threw my head back in laughter, and when my head came back down, it was onto the granite countertop at like 127 miles per hour. I split my forehead open and had to go to the ER for stitches, but wait, there's more. In the ER, one of the nurses asked how I cut my forehead, and I told her I was laughing at a fart. She then laugh farted in response. I was 11, so obviously this was the funniest goddamn thing that had ever happened to me. Anyway, I'm 30 now, and I still have that stupid scar right between my eyebrows, and sometimes I remember how I ruined my Thanksgiving like 20 years ago, and then a nurse farted, and I laugh. (laughs) That is so funny. That is terrific. I just think that there's a point in which you are laughing so hard That you disconnect from reality and then you are suddenly like, what has happened? I'm in a complete different place. My forehead is split open. What is, why am I under the bed? I don't understand. You just completely lose your mind when you're laughing so hard sometimes. And it's always farts that do it. Always. Always and forever. If you don't think farts are funny, you are a real silly goose. I'll tell you that. It may be harsh. But it's how I feel. This is a super short one from a deleted user. Three words. Deep frying turkey. It's a good thing we decided to do it in the driveway instead of in the garage. I think that should be... You need a license to deep fry a turkey, okay? Effective immediately. It's not that you can't do it. But you need to take a four-hour intensive course taught by... Chefs and fire department equally. And you need to pass this test with 95% accuracy. There's a written test and a practical exam. Same thing with Instant Pots, actually. Pressure cookers, those things are nonsense. Here's another little story from M. Dawes 7. My boyfriend's brother brought over these really spicy chips he got at Five Below. Uh, Maybe that's a store. I don't really know. I think they are called the spiciest chips in the world, but I don't know. Anyway, both of them ate one. About five minutes later, I walk into the kitchen and see my boyfriend with tears rolling down his face, stuffing ice cream in his face. Then he disappeared for a little bit, so I went upstairs and found him laying in the hallway, drenched in sweat and barely able to even speak. He said he threw up and wasn't human for the next little bit. Both their grandparents were calling them idiots. I mean, if those are the chips I think they are, those are no joke. And I think you have to have like an ID to buy them now because kids were getting really sick eating those because they're so spicy that they can really, really mess you up. I can't believe doing that on Thanksgiving, though. He probably couldn't even enjoy any of the food. He was just like all sweaty and like sitting in a ball. Probably should have gone to the hospital. Maybe that's so sad. Here is a story from username False Sleep. My partner's aunt made a huge stink that the cranberry sauce had to be the specific kind from a can. And no, it couldn't be that same kind of cranberry sauce that had been purchased already because the other can had actual fruit in it. Partner's dad had to hurry to the grocery store to buy the right one. Only after the meal was over did anyone notice that neither cranberry sauce had actually been put out for dinner. See, that just goes to show you that it was never about the cranberry sauce. It was about control. And those people don't deserve any cranberry sauce. Cranberry sauce is amazing. It's delicious. I love it. I don't care what kind it is. If it's the jelly roll kind that's like a big gelatinous little jello slinky bring it on. I love it. Or if it's the whole berry kind, great. Sweetener added, great. No sweetener added, love it. Just give me it. Also, 
raw cranberries are very fun because if you put them underneath like the blade of a knife or something and then you like press down on the knife they pop it's like such a nice little popping sound and then you can add them to like tea or make them into whatever you want maybe some cranberry sauce a lot of these are really short and sweet funny ones so (laughs) here's here's another one from slurp nurp Grandma threatened to shit in the turkey if we don't let her watch Jeopardy. (laughs) My question is, why, what does she do during Jeopardy time that makes it so that she needs permission? Is she just too smart? Is she too loud when she watches it? Like, what, what is happening? Does she watch it nude? What's going on? I need answers. Give me, what is grandma doing for 500? All right, here's one from Shading Night. My aunt decided to announce that she got chlamydia as we started to eat, and my grandmother told her getting stuffed by random people is for turkeys. (laughs) That is so good. Oh, my God. All right, now I'm going to share a Thanksgiving story or two of my own. I don't remember what year it was, but it was a while ago, long, a long while ago, I'll say a long while. And my dad was in charge of the turkey. And I think it was about the four or five hour mark. We would always I think we've been eating at like 1pm at my dad's house for like, as long as I can remember, that's just when it is 1pm. So it'd been like four or five hours, we were like prepping everything else like salad, mashed potatoes, we were making appetizers. We were playing card games. We were being all jolly and decorating. And we were like, I don't smell anything. Why is there an absence of smell? We should be smelling bird things, right? And so we look, my dad forgot to start the oven. There was <laughs> there was no turkey. Now me being vegetarian by that time, I don't think it impacted me a lot because I could still eat everything else that I was going to, like just the potatoes and rolls and salad and stuff, you know, green bean casserole before I realized that I hate green beans. Nasty. That was, oh, my poor dad. He was so embarrassed. So we started cooking it and then we just had a super late Thanksgiving. So we like kept everything warm and refrigerated cold things and all that. We were, I think we laughed about it, though. It was one of the few times I did hear my dad swear, though, <laughs> when he opened the oven. That was pretty good. There was another time to my sister, Lindsay, if you listen to this, I'm so sorry, but I'll never forget it. Lindsay was always in charge of making the salads because she made really, really great salad because she's just a salad fan. And so when you like something, you know how to make a good one, usually. So she would make these like amazing, giant, beautiful salads and she had a big, giant bowl of it. She had just finished it. It looked really great. And she dropped it on the floor. And I don't think the bowl broke, but it definitely fell upside down. And it was so sad because she worked so hard. I think she just cried and ran downstairs. It was really sad. I think she had to have been like 13 or 14. In classic Thanksgiving running joke family style we gave her a hard time about it every year. (laughs) We haven't given her a hard time about it lately, so maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to start that up again. Growing up in such a big family, though, it was so fun growing up with Thanksgiving and stuff because we had these, these really fun traditions that we would do where we would do sibling gift exchange. And because there's so many of us, we would just draw a name out of a bowl. And we'd always do it after pie on Thanksgiving. That's the rule. You do it after pie. And then you find out who you're buying for. And it's not a secret, but it's still super fun. And that one we still do, except for instead of drawing names out of a bowl, because we all live all over the planet, we just do it electronically with a random name generator. And it's still still a hoot, but I love that we still do that. And there's just so many special memories where we would just sit in the kitchen. You're in the kitchen all day during Thanksgiving, like even after the guests leave and stuff, you're just in the kitchen, right? So we would sit all around the table and just laugh until we were crying because after a while of eating and so much joy, you just get almost like intoxicated 
without any substances. You're just feeling so joyful and happy. And I really treasure those memories of us trying to throw goldfish crackers into our mouths, but we're crying with laughter or somebody's very gassy after dinner and it just won't stop (laughs) reverberating off of the wooden chairs and the tile. This is just a really special time and I love it so much. I do have a listener story to read as well. This listener story was sent in on Instagram from Danielle. It was Walla Walla at a buffet restaurant that my grandma picked out, so you already knew it was going to be weird. It was really dark, and I'm maybe six or seven, and I remember those big red heat lamps over everything. We'd go through the buffet, and I wasn't allowed dark meat because my mom thought it was icky for some reason. I never knew I liked turkey until I had dark meat, by the way. But I go through with my dad and I grabbed a drumstick. I was so excited about it. I wanted to give it a huge chomp like an animal. (laughs) That's in all caps. Some waiter sees six-year-old me with a huge ass drummy on my plate and asks my dad if we paid for it in advance or reserved it. I guess you had to. We said no, and I sheepishly watched back to the buffet station and returned it to the guy carving the turkey, and he just threw it in the trash? I was so mad because A, what a waste, and B, why couldn't I have it? I just don't think we've been back there, to be honest. (laughs) Thank you, Danielle. That is wild. Why would they make you give it back just to throw it away? That is so rude. You know that I guarantee you that dude just wanted that drumstick. He was saving it for his own personal break. He was going to have it on his break. And then he was jealous that you got it. And he was like, if I can't have it, fucking nobody can. That's so rude. Oh, my heart breaks for tiny you in that moment. That does it for this week's episode of Tales from the Troll Hole. Thank you so much for listening. I am thankful for you and for listening and having a nice time. Taking me with you on your journey. I'm just in your pocket going around doing what you're doing. But in a nice way, take care of yourself. The holiday seasons can be stressful on people. So just remember, take care of yourself. Take little breaks when you need to. Take a walk. Listen to something. Take an Uber. Go somewhere else. Whatever you got to (laughs) do. Oh, and make sure that somebody at your holiday party knows the Heimlich Maneuver. Very important. Next week's episode is going to be all about what it's like to work retail on Black Friday. (laughs) I've done that before. This is going to be a juicy one. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you next week. (laughs) Bye. Thank you so much for listening to Tales from the Troll Hole. I'm your host, Cecil B. And this show is produced by me. Our theme song is by Vervex. They're a great band. You should give them a listen. You can stream them anywhere. They're also on TikTok and Instagram. Remember to subscribe so that you don't miss out on a single episode. And also find us on Instagram. And then you can send in your own stories. I just ask that they're true and that uh, they're not going to scar somebody for life. You know what I mean? Anyway, thanks for listening and I'll see you next week. <laughs>